Hey everyone, it's Alexi Uzas here. Welcome to video one of week two, preparing your finance plan. So here's what we're gonna cover in this module. First, we're gonna talk about the difference between a budget and a finance plan. Then I'm going to explain to you how we always begin with um, writing down what we believe that we can actually finance. So what figure we think we can realistically raise from the marketplace. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to prepare your first finance plan. So we're going to do that in this module. Um, then I'm going to ask you to ask yourself a hard question. So once we've prepared the finance plan, um, we're going to allow ourselves an opportunity to really think about the project that we're working on now and just make sure that what we're trying to do you know, matches up with um, you know, what we're going to realistically be able to raise in terms of the finance. And then I'm going to explain to you um, the idea of the point of no return and um, how that's going to affect your filmmaking process. So here we go, budget versus finance plan. So the difference between a budget and a finance plan, most simply put, is the budget is the hard costs of production, while the um, finance plan is those sources of finance that make up the finance plan um, and allow you to actually pay for your hard costs of production. Now I know a lot of you might already know that um, but it's important to number one know the difference between the two and more importantly know the importance of um, the finance plan versus the budget because you know I get a lot of people that come to me and you know, they pitch an idea to me or they send me a screenplay um, or we have a phone conversation. And one of the questions I always ask is, what is your expected budget? And the answer that I get to that question, you know, varies hugely depending on who I'm talking to. You know, there have been times where I've been told that a one location horror film has an expected budget of seven million US dollars. And, you know, it, it kind of baffles me because it goes against, you know, the whole reason of why you would do a one location horror film to begin with. Um, but secondly, you know, I then ask the question, well, how are you going to finance a film? And almost universally, the response that I get is I have no idea. And to go into a meeting and say that, you know, the expected budget or the budget range is three to five million or five to 10 million. Um, but having no idea about how you're going to finance it really isn't the best approach of how you need to be going about trying to get your film um, financed and into production. So, you know, it's important to know the distinction between those two things. Um, and more importantly, um, you know, you need to know how you're going to finance your budget. If you have no idea how you're going to finance it, um, you know, then there's really no point throwing around, you know, big fig figures in the millions of dollars. And so, you know, this is what we're going to work on together in this module uh, because we need to start getting realistic about what sort of finance we're going to be able to attract to a project so that we can make sure that the film gets into production. So if you think about it like this, you know, you can have finance without a budget. So, you know, you can go and raise money based off an idea and based off a rough es estimate of what something will cost. Or you might come across an investor that, you know, wants to put some money into your next project. They might have no idea what the project is yet. They might just want to support you. All right, so you can have finance without having a budget. But you can't have a budget without finance, right? you can't start spending money if you don't have the money. And so the finance should always come first. You should always be primarily concerned with how much finance do I have, not what is my budget. And so, you know, another reason why your, you know, the budget needs to come second in this equation is that there's so much scope for changing your budget. And you know, I'm not even talking creatively. I'm talking, you know, even to begin with, you know, the equipment that you use to shoot a film. Um, you know, are your crew on any deferred payments? Is there any in-kind support? Can you negotiate location higher down? You know, there's all those things that you can work on to bring your budget down. 
and you know that's not even to to begin with getting into the creative you know you can then go a step further and start making changes to the script that of course you know can be done with the um, primary aim to bring down the budget but you know it's very difficult to do that on the finance side you don't have as much scope to move around like that and so you really want to get the financing right and get that going first and then you want to kind of step into the budget which is why you know even this week the two modules modules are split in a way that the financing comes first and the budgeting comes second and so i've just given you i gave you an example earlier about a um you know a filmmaker that had pitched a, a large budget horror film to me you know recently again i was pitched um an idea and I was told the budget was 10 to 15 million dollars because it was going to be a period film. And, you know, when I asked the person how they were going to finance the film, again, they had no idea about where they were going to start. And, you know, it needs to apply to every, um, every line in the finance plan. So you might have a general idea that, you know, you're going to apply for a tax credit and run some private money and maybe attach a sales agent. But again, you really need to know how you're going to do those things. You know, how much private money do you need? And, you know, who are you going to try and attract in terms of private investors? And, you you know, you need to get much more um, granular than that. So, um, you know, what I want to make sure of is, you know, everyone in this that's going through this course starts to think of this in a much more commercial way, thinking of, you know, um, how much finance can we raise in the marketplace? How much money can the film actually make in the marketplace? And then working out the budget from there. And so, you know, that goes against probably what a lot of people have been taught either at, you know, film school or um, in other, other online courses or producing intensives, um, or even just from being in the industry, you know, it, it's not a common thing. Most people go around and they have budget ranges for their film, but no one seems to be talking about how um, how the finance is actually going to come together. And so, you know, you want to kind of go against the crowd. If everyone is doing it that way and, you know, they're going around and um, giving million dollar budget figures with no idea about how to finance it, you know, I'm sure you don't want to be one of those people. And so... Um, what I want you to do is, is, you know, turn away from the crowd and um, go in the other direction because by going in the other direction, um, you know, you're probably you, you're doing what the majority is not doing and that's, that's usually a good thing. And so here's a quote um, from Mark Twain. Whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. And I think that's a great quote. I've um, included that for download in the resources section. And so, you know, if you're just doing things because it's the way that other people do it and it's because, you know, how it's been done before, then you really want to stop and question yourself and question why you're doing something. And, you know, question if it makes sense. And try and use, you know, try to use first principles thinking. So ask why, why, you know, kind of get, get back to the basis of why something is being done um, and then make sure, you know, that your thinking aligns with that and it's not just um, going along with the pack mentality. So let's talk about starting with what you believe you can finance. So at this stage, if you, you know, if you don't have any... Um, finance attached to the project then you know you don't have any government agencies on board you don't have any um, distribution advances um, you know you don't have any private equity yet if you don't have any of these things then we need to start from the place of okay well what do we have right now you know what resources do we actually have available and so the first question you need to ask is, what are you willing to contribute to your project? You know, are you willing to invest into your project? And I know that you've invested in this course. And so, you, you know, you've already shown that you're committed to, you know, to, to actualizing, um, you know, the making of your film. So the question now is, what, what else are you willing to contribute? And 
What I want you to do is grab a piece of paper and I want you to write down a figure. And that figure can be anything. It can, it can be zero. You know, if if the investment into this course is all that you're able to contribute, that that's, then that's fine. But we need to know today um, how much money we have available. So write down that figure on a piece of paper. Then the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to think about how much private finance you believe that you can raise. Now, I know that that's a difficult question and, you know, there's no right answer to that. There's no formula for that type of thing, right? But you need to think, you know, if you've never raised private finance before, well, you know, what is a realistic target for you? You know, is there a number that you can think of that you say, okay, you know, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to raise it, but I think that, you know, that, that that's the figure that, that not having raised finance before, I think that I can, you know, that I can aim to raise. And I think that that's a, a realistic goal. You know, you should still be pushing yourself. You still want to be aiming high. But, you know, like I explained in, in week one, you still want to have your feet on the ground. So if you've raised, maybe you have raised private finance before um, and you feel more confident or maybe you already have investors that are circling the project and, you know, you have a general idea that, you know, um, you know, that they do want to invest in this particular project. So what you want to do again is just take some time to think about this and write that figure down as well, right? So you should have two figures now. The figure that you're willing to personally contribute to the project and then a figure that is the amount that you believe that you can raise privately. So now we're going to talk about preparing your finance plan. So in the download section, you should see a finance template. I want you to download that and open it. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So here's the finance template that we use. And firstly, you can put your project title in um, this cell here. The total budget, um, you're going to leave that blank for now. And we're going to come back to that. The date should update automatically. The um, production QPE budget. So QPE stands for qualifying production expenditure. And it relates to a production where um, you're shooting in a state or in a country where there's a tax credit or a tax rebate. And it's basically all the costs that qualify as production expenditure for the purpose of that rebate. Now, it doesn't, the budget, the total budget and the qualifying production expenditure don't always match, right? So in Australia, for example, um, where there's a 40% tax rebate, the contingency that's included in the budget and some other costs like your finance costs aren't included in the qualifying production expenditure. So this figure here is usually um, less than the total budget by around, you know, around 10%, roughly. Um, and so I just want you to know that for now, you don't need to do anything with it, um, but that's what that figure stands for. So what I want you to do now is work your way down this finance plan list, um, starting at the top at local distributor. And I want you to add in you know, any finance that is already attached to the project. So if you've already attached the local distributor, put in their advance there. Now, I also, you know, if you've had discussions with distributors that have been, you know, um, productive and, you know, they might have made an offer or they might have signaled to you how much they might be willing to put in. Um, for the purpose of this ex exercise, it's okay to put that figure in as well. Now, same goes with a sales agent. You know, if you have them attached, put the figure in. If you haven't attached them yet, um, but you've had some discussions with them again, and again, they've indicated a figure, you can put that in. But you know, if you haven't had any discussions with the sales agent, that has to be zero for now. So add in um, any finance from a gap lender, uh, your tax credit, if you come down here, um, if you go to sell D18, 
um, and then you go to the formula section. You just want to include the um, the relevant uh, rebate amount. So this is the Australian one; it's forty percent. But you know, if you're in New in New York, for example, it might be thirty percent. Um, or you might be somewhere else in the states where it's twenty five percent, or in Europe. So just put that percentage in. But you can otherwise leave that blank for now. Um, government agency one and two. So if you've received um, any uh, production funding from any government bodies, I want you to put those in now. So that could be a grant or it could be production investment. Um, and yeah, please put in that uh, in those two uh, in those two cells. Again, you know if your project has received development funding from a government agency and there's a good you know indication from that body that you'll get production funding then it, again, it's okay to put that amount in here. But if you've had no discussions with government agencies um, at all about a potential amount, then you, you have to leave that blank. So both of those. Then in producer contribution, I want you to write, uh, sorry, to add in there the figure that you wrote down on the piece of paper before. And that's the one of how much you're willing to contribute. And then under investor sponsor, I want you to put the second figure that you wrote down before. So, you know, how much do you believe that you can raise um, privately for this film? And I want you to put that figure in. And then for post-production, I want you to leave that blank for now. So, you know, I'm going to work through this as, a, as an example for you. So, um, you know, on my first film, uh, I think I mentioned, you know, I was working full-time as a lawyer and I agreed with the two co-directors that we would put $40,000 each into the production of the film. And so, you know, let's say that's the case here. So I've put in $40,000. There's two other people at $40,000. Let's just put them under investor. And, you know, we didn't even try to raise private finance on that. We just went straight into putting our own money in. So... Difference to budget here because we've got the zero in the budget, we're 120 in the positive. So, you know, that's now the budget. The budget is how much we can raise, it's how much finance we can put together to this project. So, you know, you go up to the budget section now, and if you put 100 and 20,000, difference to budget now is zero because the budget now matches the finance that we can bring into the project. Okay, now, if, if you're in a tax credit um, state or country, then you want to look at, okay, well, what is the eligibility? You know, is there a minimum spend that you need? And if there, you know, for example, in Australia, there's a minimum spend of 500000 So this project wouldn't qualify. So I would leave that blank. But let's say, for example, the, um, you know, the, the minimum threshold or the minimum spend was 100000 Right, so the project qualified. Then we'd want to put in, you know, let's just say five, it's a bit over 10%. Um, let's say that's going to be the qualifying expenditure. Then we have a surplus, you know, we have um, a positive of 42,000. So if we were able to access a tax credit like that, it would bring our private investment down. So and just for ease, we'll just remove one of them. And, you know, we'll take the total of the investment between the three people to 78K. And so, you know, that's how you come up with the basis of your finance plan. That's, that's your first finance plan. Because it's not looking at, you know, how much money am I hoping to maybe raise from a government agency you know, even though I've had no discussions with them, you know, and you have to be really upfront with yourself about these things, you know, like, have you had a short film that's premiered at a major festival? If you haven't, then government funding might be difficult for you, you know, you, you may, you just might not, um, you know, you might, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's, it's extremely competitive and unless you have done something that's really of note, it is difficult to secure um, government funding and so you know um, if you're making a you know if you've made a feature film before but again that hasn't received um, agency funding and it didn't premiere at a major festival then again it might be difficult for you to get um, government funding so 
really unless you're already in discussions with government agencies, distributors or sales agents and you have an indication from them, not from you, from them about what you might be able to um, receive from them for the project, then you have to leave those blank because that's your starting point, that's your base. So this is a really simple equation and you know it kind of gets rid of all the noise um, about film financing, all the issues that you have around government funding and it just reduces it to a simple equation and this is available in the download section as well and the equation is your present finance plus your expected future finance equals your budget. And so it's that simple. You work out how much money you have today, how much money you believe you can raise, and that's your budget. And then you need to go out and raise that money. So now I want to talk about asking yourself a hard question. So you know, you now have a figure that you're looking at that is, you know, a scenario that you might find yourself in you know you might not receive any other funding you might not be able to attract an advance from a sales agent or, or a distributor you know if you have you know if you've already opened discussions with those people and you're confident that you will get that funding then sure put that into the finance plan you know and you'll still you'll still then arrive at a figure so i want you to fill that finance plan out with all the information that you have at the moment and you know, if you have strong indications or if you have any offers in writing, by all means add those in. Um, but if you don't have any of those things at the moment, you have to start from zero. And so the question that you need to ask yourself is can you make your film for that figure, for that budget? And you really need to be honest with yourself. Now, the figure doesn't have to be exact, right? So you should still be aiming high in what you want to try and you know in what you believe that you can raise and so that's fine and you know you may have thought that you know you could make a film for two hundred thousand uh, or sorry you may have thought that the budget of the film would be two hundred thousand but you can only raise one hundred thousand well you know that's fine because that's not a huge gap but the example that i want to give you is you know if you've just done the finance plan and you know the, the figure that you've come to is a hundred grand but you came into this with a budget of $10 million for your project, then there's a huge disparity between those two things. And so you have to be honest with yourself and ask, you know, can I make this film? Am I at the stage in my filmmaking career where I can pull this off? And so, you know, we talk about um, aiming for what is realistic or unrealistic. You know, it's good to have unrealistic goals and push yourself. You know, we, that's that's what this course is about. It's about aiming high, right? But you're already going. You're already going against the grain by making a film. You're already, you know, doing something that the majority of people in the world would never dream of doing. So you're already doing the unrealistic, and so within that, you don't want to make your job any more difficult. You don't want to add another layer of complication or an, another layer of difficulty on top of that you know you want to push yourself um, but you want to be pragmatic at the same time and so you know at this point I want you to really think about the project that you're working on and the figure that you've come up with and I want you to be honest and you know look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself whether you can make this film because if you can't it's fine. There's, there's absolutely no issue with that. You know, all we have to do now is find the film that will fit with that budget. And if you're thinking that, you know, you know, maybe you're already thinking that, okay, well, maybe I do need to make some tweaks to the script. That's fine as well. You know, we're going to go through all these things during the course. But what you need to do right now is just be honest with yourself about where you are 
in your career and in your ability to raise finance and what you're trying to do with this film. And so, you know, this all leads to us getting to the point of no return. And the point of no return is basically when you make the commitment that come hell or high water, you will make a film. You know, regardless of um, what you came into the course with in terms of your ideas about what you wanted to do, and regardless of you know what expectations you had, you decide today, right now, that you will make a film, that you understand you know, what is a reasonable amount for you to be able to finance your film for, and that you commit to making a film. And so I want you to take a moment to adjust if you need to, you know, because, you know, you could be coming into this with multiple projects and there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, once we get, once, once we get past the point of no return, we don't want to look back and start um, thinking about different projects. We really want to make a decision right now about which project we're going to proceed with because there's only so much time that you have. You know, you would have plotted out your time to work on your film um, in last last week's um, modules. And, you know, there's not that many hours that you can be working on a film because you've got other commitments as well. And so, you know, within that time, you can't be working on two or three films at a time. You need to focus on one film. And what you're going to put your energy towards over the, 12, the next 12 months needs to be something that's going to pay off. It needs to be something that you can realistically finance and get into production. Because like I said, there's nothing more important than getting a film actually into production and going through the process of making a feature film. And so, like I said, take a moment, pause the video if you have to, and really think about whether the project that you're working on right now is the right project. And if it is great, you know, you're in the right place, You've been through this process now um, and you know you can you can move forward with confidence and if not like I said it's totally fine you know we can work on you um, you know you, you putting another project into um, into the work that we're going to do and into um, the figure or the budget that you've just come up with and so I want you to remember the point of the course. The point of the course is to get a film financed into production and at a festival within 12 months. You know, that's the reason a lot of you would have come into this course because, you know, you want to take action. You want to actually be making a film. Um, and you're, you know, you're sick of being in development and trying to finance something. And so this is your opportunity to shift your way of thinking and your paradigm and start working on getting a film finance, getting it into production and at a festival within 12 months. So I'm going to leave you with a quote that again you can download from the resources section and it's, you have to work out what you can finance, mould the creative to that figure, produce the film and get it into a film festival within 12 months. We're not waiting for government agencies, we're not waiting for a handout, we are going out there, doing the work, and making the film. So here's your action items. By now you should have written down the two main figures that we covered earlier. How much you can contribute to the project, and how much you believe that you can raise privately. We then would have prepared your finance plan, including any other finance that you already have in place, or that you, you, know, you, you truly believe um, that is going to come into the project. So that's not just you having blind belief, you know, you've had conversations with distributors, um, they've either put something in, in writing or in an email, um, or you've received development funding on your project. And so, you know, it's um, not unrealistic to, to think that you'll get production funding. Um, you know, you can put your tax credit in there if you've passed the threshold and, and you meet the eligibility. So by now we should have a finance plan and that finance plan has given us the budget figure. And then lastly, you should have considered you know, what that figure means for you and the project and you should have taken time to really think about that and 
you know, ask yourself that hard question of, is the project that you're working on right now or that you came to the course with the right project? And, you know, we want to make a decision on that and move past the point of no return. Because once we go past this point, we're all in and we're committing to making the film. And so once we move on, we don't want to look back. You know, we want to take that next step and take it with confidence, knowing that we've made an informed decision and that we can throw everything that we can at the, at the film um, that you've decided on making in this, in this module. So that's it for the module. Um, looking forward to seeing you in the next one where we're going to cover the budgeting.